In this video problem, we're going to focus on the story of Eratosthenes, who famously came up with a remarkably accurate estimation for the circumference of the Earth in the year 200 BC, over 2,000 years ago. I'm pretty sure he had a beard. And uh, what's so remarkable, remarkable about this is that he used knowledge of a well in Egypt, he used a pole, he used the sun, and he used the basic knowledge of right triangle trigonometry. Okay, so Eratosthenes is in Alexandria, and he somehow hears about this well in Syene. And what's interesting about this well is that during the summer solstice each year at noon, uh, the sun lies directly above the well so that the well is not casting a shadow. Now in Alexandria, when Eratosthenes erects a pole, the pole does cast a shadow. So this provides further evidence that the earth is curved. And at this point, many people accepted this. There was other evidence that the earth was curved. But again, this provides further evidence. Now, really quick, people who believe that the earth is flat do not necessarily believe that this is proof because we can do a simple exercise. Here's Eratosthenes. He's standing directly below the light bulb, so he's not casting a shadow, but the pole that's next to him is casting a shadow because the light bulb's rays are hitting it at a different angle. And there stand, he's standing on essentially what's flat ground because they're so close together. So why couldn't we have a similar situation where the earth is flat, the sun is in the air, and one thing's casting a shadow, one thing isn't? Well, the observation from Eratosthenes about the pole and the well depend on the fact that the sun's rays that actually make it to the earth are essentially parallel. So just like the light bulb, the sun is shooting light rays in all different directions. But the earth is so small in comparison to the sun, and it's so far away that the light rays that are actually reaching earth have an angle difference that is so small that they're essentially parallel. So if the well is not casting a shadow, but the pole is, we must have a curved earth. Okay, so back to the problem. Eratosthenes is in Alexandria. He knows that Syene is about 500 miles away. Now, whether he knew that because there were walkers that consistently walked through the city, so they had that number recorded, or because he pay, uh, some people think he might have paid a man to actually pace out that distance and walk the whole 500 miles, somehow he had access to that information. And this is going to be important. So the angle he was looking for was the angle that the, the sun was striking the pole. So he could call that theta, or just an unknown angle. And then the shadow length was the side opposite the angle. And then the pole height was the side adjacent to the angle. So we have a nice right triangle here. So that means we can use basic right triangle trig, which is Sokatoa, something you might remember from school. So since we have the opposite side and the adjacent side, we're going to use tangent. And I don't know what uh, measurements he actually used. Um, I just decided to assume the pole is about six feet tall. If that was the case, the shadow would be, have to be about 0.749 feet. Uh, I know this because that gives us a ratio of 0 0.12491108.12, and his ratio had to have been close to this number because he ended up coming up with an angle of 7.12 degrees. Now, any, any calculator essentially uh, has a tangent inverse button, so we can plug in our ratio to the tangent inverse function, and it'll spit out the angle that goes with that ratio. So any triangle that has the opposite side to the adjacent side in this ratio of 0 0.12491108.12 must have the same angle no matter the size of the triangle. Now Eratosthenes obviously didn't have access to this technology, so I don't know how he came up with this angle. Um, I don't know if he drew a similar triangle in the sand and then used some type of instrument to measure out the angle, or if he had like a table of values where there were certain ratios and he could just go find the angle that goes with that ratio. I'm not sure, but somehow he came up with this 7.12 degrees. But now we have computers that know much more about triangle side ratios than we do that can just calculate this for us. So now possibly the most brilliant part of his idea was that he extended a line from the well into the surface of the earth, and then he extended a line from the pole into the surface of the earth, and they intersect at the center of the earth. And then he also extended the, the light ray into the surface of the earth. And then now what we have is we have two parallel lines. The orange line is parallel to the gray line. And there's a, this is important because there's a basic result in the Euclidean geometry that if we have two parallel lines cut by another line, then the alternate interior angles must be congruent. So since we have an angle of the sun hitting the pole of 7.12 degrees, then the angle formed by those extended lines must also be 7.12 degrees. And now we're almost there because we have the earth cut into a piece of pie with an angle of 7.12 degrees. So the question is now how many pieces of pie are going to fit around the earth? 
So what we can do is we can just do 360 degrees divided by 7.12 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle. And then he ended up using 7.2 degrees simply because 7.2 goes into 360 degrees an even number of times. It's 50. So there's about 50 pieces of pie that are fitting around. And then each piece has a crust length of about 500 miles. So obviously I didn't draw, draw this to scale, but what we have is we have these different these pieces of pie wrapping around the earth, each with a crust length of 500 miles. There's about 50 of them, so we do 500 times 50, and that gives us a circumference of 25,000 miles. So Eratosthenes said, aha, it's 250,000 stadia. I think that's how you say that. That was the unit of measurement he was using. It's the length of an athletic stadium. Now the problem is, in Greece, uh, the length of an athletic stadium was about 600 feet, while in Egypt it was about 500 feet. So how close he actually was depends on which unit of measurement he was using. Um, in this video, I assumed he used the Egyptian one. Uh, Syene was located in Egypt, and that's also the one that leads us to a closer estimation. Uh, again, that led us to our estimation of about 25,000 miles. And again, super remarkable because this happened over 2,000 years ago, and all he used was primitive tools. So uh, pretty incredible stuff. That's it. Thanks for watching.